Hey everyone, happy Monday. It's time for us to talk about travel here in the Jay Goot Village where we teach you how to travel and get some really, really great tips on how to travel for less and in economy. And then we also have Joe here today, Joe Michaels. It says Joe Baby, which I love. That's his nickname. <laughs> he is one of our experts in the lounge. And if you saw from the email, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Our Joe's gonna dive into food around the country, live music, because he has this amazing background. And then, of course, we're going to talk about Hyatt as well. So welcome, Joe. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Oh, man. Well, you know, Joel, Joel is traveling the world gallivanting. Our fearless uh, travel guru, Joel McDonald. Okay. I think he, where's he at in Turkey right now? Well, it was Greece the last I saw, but I knew it was Oh, over that's there. right. He was in Turkey. And I cool. can't keep track of him, but that means the next time Joel's on here, you know, he's going to be talking about his lessons learned from that trip. So mm -hmm. if you are just now tuning in, Brooke is here. She's right at the front Hi, of the Brooke. line. It's Mira <laughs> is here too. Hi, all Mira. of our favorites. Yes, yes. Uh, Brooke says you just got uh, back from the East Coast. Before that, was you were in LAX. Actually, uh, I was in San Francisco, but that's okay. I've been doing the coast to coast thing back and forth for a couple of weeks now. I gotcha. I gotcha. So let's do some housekeeping real quickly before we jump into this. If you haven't okay. tuned in before, go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. And that way we can see your comments and it'll look like this with Brooke's picture as opposed to just this waving the hand. So we want to make sure that we can see and um, see uh, see who you are, see your, your beautiful face and see who's commenting too. So speaking of commenting, you know the drill. The more that you comment, the better chance that you have to win a $100 travel savings card. Uh, Brooke will get in touch with you once we know who the name is. But what we're going to do at the very end of it, because Joe has so many, I'm, I'm going to be hungry already. Just so you know, look at this picture already. Like if you haven't eaten yet, it, this could be a little bit of a, a painful yeah, it might be. <laughs> life. Oh, okay. And uh, we're not going to be talking about chain restaurants, folks. We're going to be talking about these off the beaten places. And with your history mm -hmm. of traveling around with rock and roll bands, you've, you've seen and done a lot around the world. So um, if you make sure again, so uh, is that a beer? <laughs> Why do I not have a beer? Right. <laughs> Katie's here too. Hi, Diane. So yes, please uh, say your name. And if you could tell us where you're from, that would be kind of fun too. So we know where you're at. And if you have a, a bucket list place that you'd like to go to, say that as well too. That's always kind of fun to read. So we'll be pulling up your comments in between too. But yes, Katie, I agree. There's a lot to it. So all right, Joe, let's talk about you because you are, uh, how long have you been with the villa, with the lounge and give us a little bit of background and then we'll dive in. Well, I ran into uh, Joel somewhere and love the idea of the lounge and I've been traveling. Um, I think my first uh, commercial airline flight was in 1973 when I joined the Rolling Stones as their monitor mixer. Oh um, I've been actually working in music since 1969. I've led, I've led a very blessed musical life. Um, and you know, we, we learned that, you know, when you go to a city, um, and here, this is the best example that I always use for everybody. And is this goes for both music and for food, but I'll use a great example for food. When you go to Times Square in New York city, one of the very biggest restaurants and restaurant signs that you can see is Olive Garden. And all of my life, I have said, who would go to New York City and eat at Olive Garden when there's literally there's a there's a list that's published by um, several of the, the New York newspapers and magazines of the top 100 Italian restaurants in New York City of, of thousands and thousands. OK, but the point is, is there's actually a top 100 list. And, you know, it's funny. I've talked to a lot of people and I know and, 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 and some of you who are even new to the village will understand this. It's because you're comfortable with it. You're familiar with it. So, you That's know right. what Olive Garden is and you don't know how to take a chance. And hopefully this presentation will give you enough to um, drool over to um, really make you want to uh, to take a chance. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some restaurants and yes. I'm going to show you some matching music venues. My dog, Max, just walked by. If he comes around, you'll you'll have to forgive him. I, okay, um, I got to look at this comment from Brooke. Brooke, I agree. I just got back from New York a couple of weeks ago. And, and Joe, you even saying that of somebody just randomly going to Olive Garden or, or a chain restaurant hurts my soul 
after living in New York and then visiting there again. And just right. uh, I mean, that's that's part so of these, the these wonderful independents are places that 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 the that the chains have actually um, uh, have actually gone. So I'm gonna this I'm gonna yeah. start in Louisiana. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a picture of myself and with a guy named Jack. Jack is the chef and the owner of a New Orleans restaurant called Giacomo's. And um, it's uptown in New Orleans and next to a very, very cool venue. But Jack was Anthony Bourdain's best friend. They, they spent so much time together and they actually did an episode here at his restaurant. If, I think it's in season one or season two if you want to go back. But he specializes in New Orleans and Louisiana food with a southern style. Um, and you guys, as I'm switching back and forth, you will have to forgive me because I am going, you're going to see the documents that I've used as cheat sheets. This is not a, uh, a professional um, uh presentation by any stretch of the imagination that's not who i am but i'm going to switch this over now and this is the maple leaf bar and the maple leaf is um right next door to jack's and you know it, it's kind of a place that you can do better and again none of these music venues are going to be red rocks or pepsi center or madison square garden or or soldier field or any of these major venues that you're used to they're all places that you could walk into around the country and find um john mayer sitting on the stage without realizing it's going to happen because they're just really cool places that really cool that like to do for example every monday night at the maple leaf you can go see a gentleman by the name of george porter Tr Jr. with either his trio or his bigger band called the Running Partners. But George was in the Meters. He was in the Neville Brothers. Um, he's written a lot of the songs that you've probably heard growing up. And you can walk in there on a Monday night at 10 o'clock and uh, for 10 bucks and go see something like that. And then there's a lot of stuff that maybe you have or haven't heard of. Um, but again, as you go, we go back, just kind of go through here, um, you'll see some of the great stuff that happens. And then I'm going to go again, I have to go back and forth between this and my um, Word document, but I'm going to go to another New Orleans favorite. And this is on what's called Frenchman Street. And this place called the Spotted Cat is if you love jazz, again, you can see um, anybody from uh, from Stanley Clark to people that you've never heard of in a, in a bar. This place holds holds about 90 people shoulder to shoulder. And you can go in there and every given night, and you can see they're actually playing in the window of the bar. The stage is, is, is maybe 10 feet wide. It sits in the corner in the window of the bar. But you want to go in there and you can hear some of the greatest music that you, that you could ever imagine. And I'm going to go back now to my... Um, uh, list of photographs. And the reason I started in Louisiana, I'm going to go here first, just to give you guys a feel. Um, I actually um, work out of a uh, recording studio in, uh, um, in Louisiana. And again, even in our recording studio, it's all based around food. This is every night at the end of our recording sessions, the whole band, whoever's there, we all get together and we have a meal. This happens to be my wife's famous shrimp boil. So um, that's something that someday the world needs to. And now I'm going to go back and let me just give you a few more peeps at some of the uh, really cool um, places in um, uh, in New Orleans. For example, this is um, Domelisi's, and I'm going to make this Ooh. one a little bigger so you guys can see Please it. Do. You ever had a po boy? Here. This is the this is uh -huh. one of the best po boy, and you can see the size of the shrimp that are in that sandwich. Um, it's, uh, something that you definitely want to, um, experience. And if, if you want, um, Mia can get you th this list, um, of both the, the food places and the venues to, um, to look at. And then here I've got, um, this, um, is red beans and rice from a restaurant in Louisiana called Drago's. Um, Drago was the originator of the char grilled oyster. Um, he now has four restaurants around the state, but it is far um, from a chain. I have one more picture, if I'm not mistaken, about of Drago. Um, we'll go here. And that is Drago's wow. famous Char World Oysters. If you haven't eaten one of these, well, you haven't That's lived. Amazing. You really should 
try. Let me jump in real quick. Uh, Brooke, thank you so much for putting all these. If you're going to watch through, if you're watching the replay or just watching the show, Brooke is popping in all of the links to these places as well, which is so incredibly valuable. We so appreciate that too. Uh, here's Dragos as well. And for those of you who are asking if they if there's a replay, absolutely. As soon as we are done here, you'll be able to go back and pop through it. You'll see all the comments and so forth. And then, yes, if you are interested in this list, just uh, comment, send me the list, and uh, we'll we'll somehow get that to you, all right? I'm trying to remember how I have these um, uh, in order. I'm going to try and bring the, uh, the, um, the pictures up along with the venues that match them. Okay. And yep. this one's going to take a little bit of zooming and I hope it comes out. Okay. Cause this was taken off of my phone. This is a place in, in, in Florida outside of Fort Lauderdale called the rustic Inn, And you know, you That's can get itself? seafood, the rustic Inn. rustic Inn. the rustic Inn. you can get seafood in, in Florida in maybe what? 395,000 places. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one of my favorite. They invented something called garlic crab. And if you've ever had a Baltimore uh, uh, red hard shell crab that's steamed in the Old Bay seasoning, what they do differently is instead of using um, spices and water to steam the crabs, they use spices and garlic butter. So they actually steam it in garlic butter and infuse the crab with garlic butter. It's quite a mess. Mm. Um, but it tastes like nothing that you may or may not have ever tasted in your life. And then I'm also going to, whoops, I went the wrong way. I want to go back and I want to go down here because I think up the, up the coast just a little bit, and we're going to get into the venues in a couple of seconds, is a place called the Whale's Rib. And again, some of these are smaller, so I'm going to have to bring them up. But the Whale's Rib is just um, on the beach right outside of Boca Raton. And again, um, this one, I'm pretty sure I have another picture from inside the Whale's Rib. Um, where? You do. I see it you at do. the bottom here. Yes. Oh, my again, God. The food. Holy moly. We will, holy. again, zoom this in so it gets a little more appetizing. They make the most amazing Bloody Mary. Uh, things like steamed, cla uh, steamed clams, fried shrimp, um, lots of beer. Um, and I will tell you that almost every place that I'm recommend recommending here um, is going to have somewhat of a waiting list no matter when you come. And they rarely, these small places, ever um do they take reservations so now i'm going to at the same time going to talk yeah. about some of the florida music venues okay. mine is too mira she says my stomach is rumbling i'm hoping yeah. that it's not being picked up by the mic over here i'm not kidding you so <laughs> so in in boca raton and alter i'll shut down all these mailing list requests but you can go and again this list is available to you but if you go to this place has been around for about 15 years it's a small intimate venue that holds 200 people. It's all seated. It's called the Funky Biscuit. It's in Boca Raton. And you can see there's stuff here that you've never heard of. Okay. But then you'll get down a little bit further down the list. Hopefully we will. And he does a lot of the tribute bands that you might want to, but then you'll also get to, oh my God, I can't believe that guy is playing there. Like for example, Papa Chubby, he's a blues hall of famer and you can catch him. But then again, you can also go in on a Monday or Tuesday night and get a great saxophone player that you've never heard of. Um, you know, Jeff Scott Soto is an amazing horn player. So it, it goes from uh, Billy Cobham, the drummer. And it's funny, Billy must be on tour because you'll see a lot of the venues that I'm going to show you. Um, he's going to be at a lot of these places. But the point is, is that any one of these places at any point in time, it's so much better than going into the commercialized versions of um, of, of what else is out there. So I'm going to close a few of these windows down and we're going to go back and I'm going to talk just a couple of more uh, or another venue here in, um, in Florida. Let me get my control button here and we will go to Skipper's Smokehouse. I didn't want to um, go to uh, uh, Florida without at least getting two places. Okay. And this is up in Tampa. So it's a, it's basically on the left coast. But again, if we go to um, the live music calendar and let's see who's playing at Skipper's, I haven't looked in a long time. Uh, you know, they've got a th every night, Thursday night, Gr Grateful Dead night. But for example, they got uh, Memphis Lightning, Lightning and Steve Avery. That's another great blues show. So they, again, you just don't know what you're going to run across, but uh, they're, they're, they're just great places that you can look at. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I have any Atlanta um 
uh, food pictures, but I want to show you a little place that is amongst my absolute favorite um, venues in the whole world. Okay, and this is called the Northside Tavern, and I will actually be there on uh, Friday, September 30th. And this is a place where I promise you, even though it is a teeny weeny little place, again, only holds about 100 or 150 people. Um, this Zyda Funk show happens every 90 days. It's uh, run by a bass player named Charlie Wooten, who has been in a lot of, including, again, he's played with the Neville Brothers. He's played with a band called Royal Southern Brotherhood. He's played with a lot of great New Orleans people, and he does this jam. And in the nights that I have been there at this jam, um, uh, Zach Brown has been there, and you ought to see what it's like to get in there when Zach's in there. And But people of that level, Florida Georgia Line, the guys from Florida Georgia Line, Michael Jackson's guitar player is usually part of um, the band that does this. So, again, and you can see there's all kinds of various different people that are coming here. Um, some are bigger than others. But if you're in Atlanta and you want to do something different, why not go to one of the most um, iconic juke joints in all of the southeastern United States? Um, it's, it, it, it's a, it's a really fun and really cool place to go. Let now, me pop this in real quick. Uh, just because I love this comment. Katie says, you know what? Any of these places would be perfect for the J Goot rule. Number one trip, which is look every day, literally just a restaurant hop and listen to music, set your trip alerts, people. Excellent point, Katie. Excellent point. You could just do a whole food and music review tour, right? Well, and in any one of these cities that I'm talking about, the, 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 it's not just one night. I mean, like in New Orleans, you go to a different venue and a different restaurant for 25 nights. Um, and I also recommend that everybody goes to Jazz Fest once in their life. It's the last weekend of April through the first week of May, weekend of May. And it is one of the most great music and food experiences that you'll ever, ever want. So now I'm hopping up the coast to Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. And this is the, um, the, place called the eight by 10. You can see small stage, small crowd. There's actually a really cool balcony where you can sit around the stage, but again, you can go in and, um, and I know that, that like, for example, John Mayer stopped in there many times to play George Porter, who I showed you from the Maple Leaf. He'll pop in there all the time. The building itself is owned by a, and Brooke, if you want to maybe, or I'll just, I'm just going to, uh, um, give me a second. I'm just going to put this up here because it wasn't in my list. Um, but there is a wonderful, wonderful um, restaurant in Baltimore called Mother's Federal Hill Grill. And the guy who owns Mother's used to own the 8x10. He still owns the building. Um, but the food at Mother's is wonderful. And if you ever happen to go to town for a Baltimore Ravens game, I'm actually going to see the Broncos play the Ravens this year. If you go there, this is the official Ravens tailgate party headquarters. And you can oh, see the look at that food. egg. Look at that egg yeah. on that burger. Yeah, that, that, that's 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 and so Mother Dave is a uh and my kind of crowd. But it's 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 a family run place. It's a wonderful place. All of the food is named after various different musicians and artists. And again, so you can see the crowd outside for a for a for a Ravens game. It gets pretty big. But um, it's 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 not your you know we can all go and eat crab cakes everywhere in Baltimore. But this is to me this is where you want to go because it's off the beaten path and it's and it's just a little better than the commercial stuff. So now I'm going to go back here to my, uh, where's my drop box before we get lost here. And I am going to venture us into New York City. Um, yeah, Bailey, I agree. I need to get out east. I, I agree. So again, uh, somebody asked about Italian food in New York City. And mm -hmm. to me, the ultimate place. Um, and a lot of the, you'll see a lot of these same people in a lot of my pictures. Because, you know, I've got a lot of friends and I have a very much a close circle of friends in New York. This is in a place called Umberto's and you can see the food. Umberto's is in, actually it's in its third location since they opened in the seventies. But if you guys happen to watch the documentary on the making of the Godfather that I think was on Netflix or, um, and it was, a, it was a great movie, but during one of those episodes, there was an episode where there was a scene in there where Carlo Gambino was actually executed um, in a restaurant facing the window. That was actually in, Ur in Umberto's. That's really where they got their name. And they wow. have been the heart of Little Italy ever since. Uh, and the food is just extraordinary. And it's amazing how many people don't really know 
Um, there's the uh, the actual picture of Umberto's. That's what the front of it looks like. Again, nothing pretentious. You would walk by this five times before you'd ever walk in there. But then again, there is the those are the best places, food. though, Joe. The this ones is that aren't food appetizer tower with all kinds of clams Ooh. and lobsters and garlic bread and all kinds of good food that goes in there. You notice it said Umberto's Clam House. It actually used to be a clam bar, but you know, then they evolved into a full blown Italian restaurant. Um, another picture of another group, and you can see what the food looks like on the plates. Uh, we hadn't gotten to it yet, so we decided to uh, share it there with uh, the plates. Um, and I think this is the last one. Another crowd, another gr group of people. And again, some of these people were there, but these were actually three different meals that I took these pictures from. Um, in, in, okay, and then I'm going to go up to, uh, where are we here? So we're now we're going to go to something that's a little bigger. This is when instead of going into um, Olive Garden um, on Times Square, why why not go into Carmine's? Huh, same faces keep popping up, but there we go. We're in Carmine's, but let's get a food picture up here. Um, so this hopefully well, it's not food. I thought I put some food in there, but maybe not. I guess I did. A lot so, of friends. So no food at Carmine's, but again, it's an Italian place, and that's a place that you want to go to. Um, with a crowd because they serve it family style. If you order a plate of spaghetti and meatballs, it'll it'll it would serve four people if that's the only thing you're eating. But usually, what happens? You go, you can see with those pictures. We go in with six or eight or ten. You order four or five dishes. Everybody shares a little bit, and it really is um, a, an absolutely awesome experience. Now we will go to our venue list. And this is a really important one to pay attention to because they have spots all around the country. And we'll go over that in a second. But this one is a place called Brooklyn Bowl. Okay. And it started as a bowling alley out in Brooklyn. And what they did is you can see the crowd in the venue. The stage is kind of right here where we're standing and you're looking out into the crowd, but you can also buy a ticket to bowl while you're listening to music. And that concept is beginning to grow around the country. And you can also see that they have um, locations. And I'm going to see if, uh, all right, let's click the down area here. They have Las Vegas and Nashville and Philadelphia also. The original is in Brooklyn. And it's one of those places if you want to experience um, great music. Let's go to, um, uh, hang on a second. We'll let's see if we can get this to close down. And where is their calendar? They must have a calendar here. Let's do this first and see if that gets us there. Um, no, nope. uh, shows. There we go. It was covered by our little drop down menu. But you can see, uh, again, a Beatles tribute, so nothing. Um, but then Daft Punk will be there. Um, so various different larger and smaller artists trying to try and catch a few of the really cool ones that are there. Um, they do these jams like the uh, the da James Brown Dance Party, um, yeah. the, the original James Brown band. So you can, but whenever you go in, you'll find something. The Whalers, the original Bob Marley band with uh, with um, uh, Bob's uh, brother Bunny uh, Bunny runs that band. Uh, Melvin Seals is, is, is a great one. But the point is, there's great music at any point in time. The, the Chihuahua, they're from, they're a, uh, a Mardi Gras Indian band from New Orleans. Um, there's lots of good stuff. So again, when you're in New York, instead of just going to walking around Times Square, hop in a taxi, go out to Brooklyn and go spend an evening at Brooklyn Bowl. Their fried chicken, by the, by the way, there is every bit as good as the fried chicken that you'll find anywhere else on the planet. That's a tall um, order, which I love. Hey, I'm going to throw one in there too, one that's called Terra Blues, T-E-R-R-A Blues. Uh -huh. It's down in Greenwich Village. I went there the last couple of times. I mean, talk about just smoky upstairs atmosphere, just just delightful and, you know, small, concentrated little place. Again, that's down in the village. And um, so it's places like that, that I, right. I, you know, we really, and guess what, you know what we want to do too, and this is what we're all about here in the village and the lounge is promoting uh, these smaller businesses that aren't the change. And yes, chains are great too, but we really want these small mom and pop yeah. shops um, that have had a tough time in the last two years. So get out and, and support them. Okay. So now I'm going to move, move just a little bit, bit up the coast, south of Boston for our venue. Okay. Um, and this is the FTC theater. Okay. Um, and this is a nonprofit. A friend of mine who is a retired investment banker is now the chairman of this. And again, you can see 
everybody that you've heard of from the English beat to Moon Hooch, who you've never heard of. And then Jonathan Edwards. And by the way, we happened to catch him a couple of years ago. While he is not a young kid anymore, I don't know if you remember the song Sunshine Go Away Today, but that's mm -hmm. Jonathan Edwards. He's still on the road with by himself with a guitar. If you ever get a chance to catch him, it's an absolutely wonderful show. But again, this is this is music in Fairfield, Connecticut. You can go drive from uh, New York up to Boston. And then I am going to go into our Dropbox and get to our pictures. And I'm going to go to a place called D'Amelio's. D'Amelio's Off the Boat uh, Seafood is what this place is called. It's in Revere. And I will make this a little bit bigger. And this is their... Um, Seafood Ooh. pasta dish. There's actually pasta under there, but this particular picture, it's a little hard to see and find. Um, and I've got quite a few of uh, their others. Let's see. That was the original one. Let's go to number two. There is their spaghetti or their fettuccine and a meatball, which mm. is pretty standard Italian fare. But their seafood is really what makes this place special. There is the actual building itself. And again, there's, there's a, a common thread to all these places that I'm showing you. These are not places that you would probably ever think to walk into unless you knew they were there because they are just great mom and pop shops, as Mia said, that make just great food. And this is, if you're ever going there, put this in the back of your mind. This piece of swordfish is literally, they, like, the reason they call it off the boat is their chef at 10 o'clock every morning goes down to the dock and picks his fish for the day. And if it doesn't sell, it is um, given to the cats out in the trash can that night. It, there, nothing spends an extra day in the restaurant. He buys what he needs. When he's out of swordfish, he's out of swordfish, and so on and so forth. Wow. So um, it's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's something that you really need to experience. And again, we're now we're going to go back to our venue list. Where are we going next? Okay, we're going to go to Chicago. And I'm not sure that I had any Chicago food. I think I remember the last time I did this presentation in the lounge, I forgot the Chicago food. But I want to make you guys aware of a couple of great venues in Chicago. One is a club on the north side called Martyrs. And again, some of these you will find that are... Uh, bands that you've heard of, some are not, but the trick is, is all you have to do is show up any night of the week and, you know, don't even stay within your given genre. Now, I granted, I will never walk into a place knowing that there's a heavy metal band playing. I'm not a big heavy metal fan. But, you know, if you are a jazz fan, don't be scared to go see a blues band or a pop rock band or just kind of spread out amongst something that's different. Um, back to the document here, because there's one other place that is actually owned by a friend of mine, and this is called Space in Evanston. This is another 250 seat seating um, place, but if you notice, you can see anybody from people you've never heard of, like a Tom, Tom Petty tri tribute called the Heart Records, and very next two nights, you can see Stanley Clark, the famous jazz bass player. OK, or a few nights later, you can go and you can go see Al Stewart, um, you know, the English rocker from You're the oh, Cat. Oh, yeah, You're um, the Cat. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the Blue Monday is just a, uh, a Blues Monday jam session. But as you go through, um, you know, you can actually go see Herb Alpert. He of the Tijuana Brass has got a new band, Walter Trout, the famous blues guy. But again, and then you can also go and see people. Um, like the Little Miss Ann Band is the house band. They're local Chicago musicians, but they're just as good as anything else that you've heard of. You don't necessarily have to have heard of a lot of these people to um, to go and go see them. It doesn't necessarily. You know, and I, I love too. You're really incur encouraging curiosity, Joe, and I, I just appreciate that because I think a lot of times we just get it in our head. And I'm with you on the heavy metal. Although Beatrice says she loves metal music, so she can get out there. Well, and, and a lot of people do. Believe me, it sells out. a lot of records and it sells a lot of tickets. Yeah. There's no two ways. I mean, Motley Crue just sold out three consecutive nights in the stadium where the Raiders play in Las Vegas. <laughs> Isn't um, that and I heard it was a pretty good show from what I've heard. So uh, anyway, absolutely. now I'm, and again, I'm skipping around a little bit, but I am going to move on to Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. And there's the venue is called third and Lindsley. Again, there, if you go to Nashville, there is a street there called Broadway. It is absolutely mobbed. There's about 30 different clubs there. You can go in and out, but you're packed arm to arm with tourists and every bar is playing the same music by a different country singer. And it really gets boring after a while. If you stray just 
I don't know, a third of a mile off the beaten path. You can literally walk there from Broadway to this third and Lindsley. You can see everybody from the French family band you've never heard of um, to Big and Rich. And again, this is this is a 300 seat venue and you can go see B, Big and Rich in a small venue. Um, and then all of this Americana Fest is just crazy because there are so many great musicians that are playing here. Um, if you happen to be in Nashville right now and you don't know about Americana Fest, this starts, um, I think, tomorrow or the next day and it go, runs for about five days. Um, but, and then the other thing that they also do is they do this backstage na Nashville on Saturday afternoons, which is also really, really cool. This is an absolute must venue. Um, if you're going to be in Nashville, as opposed to just going and strolling Broadway. And now let me go into our, um, food drop box again, because I'm going to show you some interesting stuff. From we do have somebody that says, I can't tell who it is, but they said Third and Lindsley is awesome. So we have another fan out there of that too. That's great. And so again, again, you know, if you're watching the replay, check out all the comments that uh, this is only going to show up on the Facebook live as opposed to uh, what's going on on YouTube. But uh, Brooke has been popping all these links in here, which is so great and so helpful. So you'll be able to see after each one that you mentioned. And oh my God, that's barbecue. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big barbecue guy. For those who don't know me, I'm also a championship level smoker. And I've probably eaten barbecue in no less than 200 venues around the country. So I've got a pretty good feel for it. I actually serve uh, uh, pulled pork to the uh, club level at the Broncos Stadium every home game. Um, and, uh, and hi, Steph, and we, I saw that and, uh, I'm yep. glad you saw it. You've probably eaten this too. And a great, granted, there's tons of barbecue around Nashville. My favorite is a place called Jack's. And he has a location on Broadway. I highly recommend you stay away from it because it's crowded and not a lot of fun. There's a place. He's got two other places outside of town. This one happens to be up on Trinity Lane, which is north of town. Um, and again, it's not as crowded. And um, I'll give you a few more pictures there. This here is his. Uh, this is the one down on, on Broadway. And you can see this wow. is the curve that I'm making. I'm trying to get you to stay away from that crowd. There is no reason to want to be part of that crowd when you can go and stroll in on, to his place on Trinity Lane and, and just enjoy a meal without having to fight it. Unless you happen to be that person who really wants, um, uh, I think this is the other one. So, and so here is the Trinity Lane location. So to give you same guy. OK, and I don't have and I'll see if I can uh, uh, um, let me see if I can pull him up really quick. Um, okay. uh, Katie says, who wants to come take my son to a concert? LOL. He loves it. That's awesome. There we go. <laughs> so his Jack's um, uh, pie baker. Um, has opened his own uh, location. I'm going to his website right now. Okay. And this is Papa Turley's. And, and he, um, um, he does wonderful smoked food as well. But again, he's got live music down there. And you can see some of the greatest blues artists on the planet. It's um, on the lake at Nashville Shores. For those of you who know Nashville, it's, it's, it's east of the airport. It's a little bit off the beaten path. path. But again, um, I would say Jack's ribs are a little better, but if you've never had Papa's uh, pecan pie, you just really haven't lived. I wish Ooh. I had some pictures of it, but I don't. Me too. Um, and that kind of wraps up our Nashville. Let's go back to our venue list and let's see where we're going next. So next we are going to go to my hometown of Denver, Colorado, and a venue that I spend a lot of time in, a lot of my life in, called Cervantes Masterpiece. This is a very unique venue in the uh, fact that it's two venues in one. It's got the ballroom and then it's got the other side. It's in a, in a historic building. This was uh, originally opened as the Casino Club in the 40s. And in the 40s and the 50s, uh, Frank Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald, all the greats of the pop era graced the stage. And then it became a soul club. And through the 60s, Aretha and James and all of the great soul singers played there. And then it sat empty for well, probably a good 25 years till a friend of mine uh, got a hold of it and reopened it and has remodeled it. And it's absolutely absolutely wonderful. Again, some of this stuff is stuff that you've probably never heard of. They do everything from um, EDM music to funk to blues to rock and roll. 
Um, this band, Dead Floyd, if you've never seen him, is great. It's a, it's kind of a, uh, a combination of the Grateful Dead and Pink Floyd on one stage together. They kind of, um, you know, and then uh, and they also do stuff at uh, um, Red Rocks where they do an awful lot of shows up there. So you'll see them listed. The Monophonics is a great soul band if you've never seen them. Mama Magnolia, I don't know if you guys have ever caught them. It's a great female um vocal band they're just absolutely wonderful but again cervantes is one of the places in denver that i will always recommend um going back to my list here i'm going to give you two more because normally i don't go with um with corporate venues but this is one that has to be seen because this mission ballroom was designed by chuck morris and chuck is 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 one of the principals at aeg um which is the second largest promoter in the world um he built this place here in Denver called the Mission Ballroom. And you can see they there's there is um an awful lot of um of of people that you have heard of and people that you haven't. Um, but again, there's some very, very large artists that play here. But what he said is I always wanted to have Red Rocks, which is one of the five best live music venues in the world up in our mountains, which holds 8,500, almost 9,000 people. So I always wanted to be able to recreate that indoors. So that's really what he did is he tried to build a, a venue indoors that recreates the feel of being at Red Rocks, but it is indoors. So it works all winter and it, 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 it can be as large as a 5,500 seat venue. But what he did is he built the stage on wheels and you can pull it forward into the crowd and shrink it down to as little as 2,500. So he can have smaller artists that can't fill a 5,500 seat venue and he can have people that fill a 5,500 seat venue. And then he'll do things like he's had Mumford and Sons there. He's had a lot of, you know, artists that could fill an arena, but still come there and fill the 5,500 seat. And it's state of the art, the sound system, the lighting, the video, in there, they have a bar system there that I don't think anybody's duplicated yet, that there will never be more than one person in line in front of you at the bar all night long. That's the law. So you never wait for a drink. And so they have created what I consider to be the premier indoor entertainment venue in the world. And if you're in Denver, it's something, it doesn't matter who's playing there, buy yourself a ticket, go see it. And then one more that's here in Colorado. God, where have I been, by the way, Joe, because you just lit my fire on Mission Ball. Well, yeah, you live here and you haven't been to the Mission Ball room yet. Huh? I haven't. No, no, no. I love that. How their tagline is, it yeah, hits have you been to Cervantes? Here. That's the other question. Cervantes, yes, definitely, okay. definitely vlog some time there, but not Mission right, Ball. Now we're going to go up the mountain just a little bit and we're going to show some restaurants here in a couple seconds um but there is oops that didn't work let me try this one more time i hit shift instead of control there's a wonderful venue up in aspen and there is also one in um san diego and i'll show you that when we get down to san diego and it's called the belly up again this oh, is yes. a yes. 300 seat venue that only plays bands that normally play arenas or almost always. So almost we, and I, we, let's go and see what, who's playing there just to give you an idea. If you can get an idea. Okay. So you've got head and heart is going there. Buddy guy is going to be there. Um, Paul Cawthon is a great, uh, the California honey drops fruition. These are all bands that play way, way. Mavitsu, all of these people play leftover salmon. You never see them in a club. Okay. They sell out two, two shows at Red Rocks every summer. Um, you know, the chain smokers again, Pepsi Center. They do they did have their show this summer, sold out at the Pepsi Center, where we call it Ball Arena now. Uh, but the point is, is if you keep an eye and you're going to either San Diego or Aspen, keep an eye on what's going on at Belly Up. And if you get on right away when tickets go on sale, you will see artists in a teeny little venue that you would no never normally get to see in a small situation. Now, let's go back to our Restaurant photos, where'd my Dropbox disappear to now that I've got all of these windows opened? It's in here somewhere. Oh, where do we go? I think I seem to have lost it somewhere there. I may have to reopen it. Um, 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 where do we go? I think, you know what I did? I think when I did pop attorneys, I did that. And I think I got to go back. Um, there we go. We're yeah, here. Open up from that. Okay. Open up. Yep. okay, cool. So now while we're, we're in Denver, let's see what I saved out of Denver. Give me a second. Whoops. Can't wait to see. Yeah, nope, that's your second. last one. There you go. Yeah, I just, uh, 
What do we got in Denver? Okay, the first one is one that me, you may not have known about this because I only found out about this uh, about a year ago. This is called Grammy's Italian Goodies. It's in Lakewood across from the backside, the west side of Lakeside Mall. Dang. And um, if you see all of these garlic knots right here, that is a, a single order of six garlic knots. And each one is literally, I'm holding my hands up. Each one is literally this big. You get six of them. And if you go there the first time, they'll give you that order for free. Stop. The first time you come in. Oh, now, this is one third of an order of lasagna that sells for about $8.95. And you can see the beauty of that lasagna. This They were featured on uh, diners, drive-ins, and dives. So you will... Um, have to wait whenever you go it's not easy to get into but it's an absolute must for 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 denver period of a place to go and eat there is absolutely nothing like it in the world my wife and i don't eat a lot so we we left this much and took it home with us this is all that we took home none of that none of that got eaten in the restaurant okay so there's one um let's see what else we have here in okay this is up in our mountains but i think it's really important because we can't ignore dessert this is a store called Ice Cream Gelato, and they also have locations in Atlanta and in uh, South Beach in Miami, as well as several locations um, in uh, the mountains of Colorado in both Breckenridge and in uh, Silverthorne. Um, let me just give you some more because their stuff is so they make a great coffee. There's a mocha with a little bit of uh, marshmallow on top. Um, here is... To me, the best thing they do is the waffle with fruit and uh, gelato on top of it. I think that is just absolute wow. amazing little thing. And that's what it looks like when you see it from the outside. <laughs> they have the same sign everywhere, but they have one. Where's here. that at, Joe? Well, there's one in um, uh, Central Park, which is, you know, south of where the airport was yep. here in Denver. There's one in Breck. There's one in Silverthorne here in Colorado. Okay. And then there's one in Atlanta, and then there's one in South Beach. And he's getting ready to do a big expansion. So um, there's a lot on the plate right there. Um, let's see what else we've got here. We've got to find uh, – um, you know, I skipped this in New York City, and I want to bring this one up because I just saw it, and I think it's important. You guys should all oh, – yeah. You should always never forget in New York City to go by and have an ale at McSorley's. This is the oldest bar in New York City. You can see established in 1854, and um, I tell you what, it's pretty special. Uh, there's is. nothing like going there, and that's just kind of an afterthought. But it's, again – I literally the, think it's the original dirt. Yes, And exactly. dust in there, um, like that. That, that's a whole museum, it feels like. And yes, Brooke, let's go get ice cream, but let's go to okay. that Italian place first. <laughs> so let me go here. This one is a friend of mine, Andy's restaurant called The Pig and the Sprout. The really cool thing about this, and this is in Lodo, very close to walk to the stadium, uh, right behind Union Station. Have you? I don't know if you've been to this one yet, me or not, but I haven't um, yet. But I know of this one, and I'm so I'm so it with. has a left and a right side to the menu. You have the pig side, which is all pork based comfort food and chicken and so on, and fried stuff like chicken. And then on the right side is all relatively healthy stuff from vegan to 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 really cool fish and so on and so forth. So there's nobody, and it's all small plates to share. So there's nobody that can go hungry, and you can go with a group of ten people, and nobody can say, well, nope, you know what, I can't. Um, I can't find something on this menu. Everybody can find something. And again, they win the award for absolutely positively the best Bloody Mary on the planet. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. Hey, thing. that that's their that own party. special candied bacon that they make there. There may be a better picture of that wow. as we go down the pictures. Um, let's go here back again. And let's go to number, where's number three is here. Okay, again, uh, pictures of people eating food. Um, I'm just mm -hmm. stuck with those. I'm sorry. And there is their ribs. And their barbecue is pretty good. Um, his cornbread is absolutely stunning. His mac and cheese is absolutely stunning. Wow. And, and his ribs. So, okay, now let's cruise on and see what else we have. I love that concept, too. Pig and sprout. The, the two sides of the menu, you can, yep. you can really. Now, this is a little bit south of uh, Denver in... Um, uh, um, which in, in Colorado Springs, and they also have a few around the, the, the country uh, in Texas and in New Mexico as well. A place called Rudy's. It's another barbecue joint. It's absolutely wonderful, although I don't recommend their brisket. I don't think the brisket is as good as um, 
some of the other things that they make. Their smoked turkey is unbelievable. Their wow. ribs are unbelievable. And the thing that I go there for is the cream corn. I'm sorry. That's just one. Wow. Of those that's things. a strong statement. I like that. that. I absolutely adore is just absolutely incredible. Is there creamed corn? And then I think there is um, another picture of what Rudy's looks like. And uh, it's certainly not the worst barbecue in Texas. There's no two ways about it. It really <laughs> is a lot of fun to go there. And then while we're right here, if you ever get lucky enough to get an invite, if you ever want to eat prime rib, okay, yep. um, that is served. The best prime rib in the nation is served um, on my deck. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. All right. We'll have to zoom in. Get nice an invite. Minute. Yep. Just, just, just call up and ask, but there's what it looks that. like. It comes out pretty good here. I do it three or four times a year. Um, okay, let's see if I missed anybody here. Um, you know, we didn't talk about some of the other barbecue places, so I'm just going to run through um, a few of them. Uh, you definitely want to go and check out um, Stubbs Barbecue in Austin. Yep. Bring some of that up. And I'm just going to go through some others. And again, all of these will be available to you through, through, through the village. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. Um, in Memphis, we have um, Silky O'Sullivan's. That is an artist friend of mine named Deanna Bogart. This actually happened to be the day we inked the first deal for me to produce her record about 10 years ago. And we sealed it with a rib. Um, and this is Silky O'Sullivan's in Memphis, which is a great place. In Memphis for barbecue, and I'm going to scroll real far up here real quick because I saw it was up on the list, too. And again, Interstate Barbecue, which is on the border of, uh, of Tennessee and um, uh, Mississippi, right there. Their, their barbecue is as good as it gets. And then I'm going to go back again. Oops, sorry, something happened here. I hit, a, hit the wrong button. Again, this is not going to be your most uh, professional um, trans. Okay, and then I'm going to go here to um, Sugars. Where are Sugars ribs? We got to find that again. Sugars is in uh, 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 Knoxville, Tennessee, and she's been on the Food Network. Um, it sits up on the hill above the city. You can you see it whenever you drive by the city. And, but again, let me see if I can find some of her food. Again, you can look at those ribs. They are really pretty appetizing. That's um, amazing. Make you want to do it. And then one more place that's in New Orleans, because I forgot about him. And my buddy, Shaggy Chris Davis, he's he's known as the Nola Crawfish King. But all of a sudden, he has become also into barbecue. Um, again, this mm -hmm. is uh, so, some, some really cool musicians. We're all enjoying his food. But let's go to Shaggy. I guess we don't have a two. We got a three. Oh, it's crawfish. Unbelievable if you're a crawfish fan. But also as well as his crawfish. Um, no, that's just people enjoying his crawfish. <laughs> and then we're going to, um, um, guys, I know we're doing all food right now. But we are going to talk about Hyatt here in a second as well. Okay. Too. And then there, there's, there, that's pretty simple. There's a rib and there is, yep. so you can get both crawfish and a rib. There it is. So give me one more second. There's one more venue that I want to go to that I think, or two more that I really think you should meet. Um, um, we can skip all these, but I'm going to go to, if you're in the Bay Area, Whoops, wrong button again. Sorry, guys. Is Sweetwater. Okay, this is um, partnered with Bob Weir, and you can see he's actually a picture of him, Bob Weir from The Grateful Dead. Um, but again, you will see all of the Bay Area's finest artists at this one. And if you want to go across the river, this is up in Mill Valley in Marin. But if you want to go across the river into um, Oakland, and uh, it's in a good place in Oakland, so it's not a place that uh, that you have to fear going to, if you will, is a historic venue called Yoshi's. And again, you can see 250 seat venue, but you can go for 39 bucks and see the fabulous Thunderbirds. Um, you can go see Peebo Bryson. You can see go see uh, Billy Cobb and Lee Rittenauer. And if you guys and this is touring all over the country, uh, this tour that says guitar player presents 
Wayne Krantz, who's a great freaking guitar player, Keith Carlock, who's an amazing drummer, and this Tim Lefebvre, who is one of the greatest bass players on the planet. Even though you've never heard of any of these guys, when they come to your town, go see the show. You will walk out your jaw. You'll have to pick it up off the floor. It's a very special show. So you know what? I can cut it here. I think I got Ooh, through that was just amazing. About everything. Yeah, that was amazing. And y'all, I mean, if you're not hungry and ready to, you know, get online and figure out the flights to get to these places, uh, you're missing a pulse. <laughs> so, right. All right. So the other piece that we're going to talk about, Joe is our, our official unofficial expert in the lounge again. Uh, so we're in the village. Uh, Joe's in the lounge. I'm going to put some information here at the bottom if you want information about getting into the lounge. But talk about Hyatt, because this is what you pair up with. When you yeah, I, mean, I don't want right? to say that Hyatt is the only chain, but the one thing that I've figured out in my 50 plus years of traveling is their points are literally two or three times more valuable than anybody else's points. And what we teach in both the village and the lounge is to try and get the best value out of our travel. So yeah. if you're going to acquire points, you might as well acquire the most valuable ones. Um, if you're going to acquire status, I think Hyatt is the place to find your status at. And this is just a list. Discover us that Hyatt only requires you to stay for 10 nights. Okay. And with that, obviously, as you stay, you'll earn points for 10 nights. The member rates are usually uh, 10 or 12 or 15% cheaper. Right. Um, uh, when you're using points, you don't pay resort fees. Um, MGM resorts in Las Vegas and all over the country matches your status with Hyatt. Um, they have all kinds of great um, luxury hotels around the world. They give you free bottled water, so on and so forth. And all you have to do is stay 10 nights um, to be able, uh, you know, room upgrades grades as available. All you have to do is stay 10 nights to get there. Now, their next level is called Explorist. And on top of all of those things, okay, you get a special check-in desk. You get guaranteed availability. And this gets better once you get to Globalist as well. There's nothing like saying, oh, my God, I've got to go to San Francisco this weekend. And the Giants are playing the Dodgers and it's World Series time. And I need a room. They will give you a room. Now, it'll be full rack rate. But they will, they literally, and I don't know who the person is that gets kicked out, but I've used this privilege before. They're kicking somebody else out to give you a room. And that's a, uh, that's a, uh, a perk that's really, and then you also get a travel bonus with American Airlines. If you're an American guy being, United, being Denver, I'm really more of a United guy, but it's still not a bad little perk to have. Sure. And you know what you I mean? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, what I can't believe we didn't bring up was with all this food and everything is I'm sure you're using either your Chase Sapphire or your Amex when you go and eat all these places. So you're still getting you're still getting all these points. Yep, You get points, you get miles, you get yeah. perks, you get all of the stuff that goes with it. That all um, and then the Explorers together. takes 30, 30 nights to reach there. And then Globalist takes 60 nights. But the things that you get beyond here, once we get past the stuff, OK, you get. Uh, club access or free breakfast everywhere you go uh, along. You get free parking on free nights as well. Um, and uh, the guest of honor is where you're allowed to share your um, uh, your globalist privileges with other people. So if you want to gift them your status and you want to reserve a room for them, you're able to do that. You get priority access to the best rooms. And you also get something called the uh, My Hyatt Concierge. They don't advertise that. But when you hit 60 nights, they give it to you. And, for example, I am going to uh, um, Atlanta and Savannah on the, the, in, in a few weeks. And I just got off the phone this morning with my concierge. And I said, look, I'm going with another person. I want to get upgraded to a suite that has a separate living room. And then I'd like an attached room on the other side for the other couple. And an hour later, he wrote me back, done. Um, I'll make that happen for you. And uh, so it, it's 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 a level of service that and, and I'm, I'm I am gold in Marriott. I'm diamond in Hilton. I mean, I travel enough that I stay in these other chains when I have to. And no other chain of hotel even comes halfway up to what Hyatt is. So I just I don't want to sound like a Hyatt commercial, but in 53 years of travel, there's no better chain, in my humble opinion. 
which I love. And I mean, it is something that we we do talk about quite a bit. Now, this is big, this is lounge privileges right here that you personally helped Brooke craft an email to get her first upgrade at Hyatt, even though you're in Hawaii when you took time, you took time to help her figure out what to say. <clears throat> and she got the penthouse suite in Vail, which is an amazing story too. So that's that's part of the the perks of that too, of being involved. We get to access tea and chatting about it, sure. right? Then, yeah, the lounge is a pretty special place. And we've become really quite a good family. Mia, Brooke, Mira, yeah. you can see all of us that were saying hi at the beginning. We get together all over the country. We have fun. We drink too much. We uh, we, do all the <laughs> we too listen much. to good music. We do, we do, we do a lot <laughs> of stuff. And it, it's it's more than just learning how to travel. It's, it's, it's being part of a really great family of people that all love the same thing. Yeah. And I love this, Brooke. Thank you for that. For those of you who don't know, we are lucky enough, as you just mentioned, Joe, that you're an expert in the lounge. You've been an incredible asset for us. If you'd like to see more of Joe, you'd have, we'd love to have you in the lounge. So that's just, I think you gave such an awesome little snapshot overview that was so fun to, to really deep dive into these places. I'm going to pop this banner up here. So if you would like to find out more about being in the lounge, we can, we can get a, a quick call with you. So just text the word, your name and the word interested to 720-706-7999, or you can text your name and free coaching to 720-706-7999. And that's the great thing, Joe, you know, we, we, this is probably how you got started in it too. We just talk about, Hey, what are your needs? You know, the lounge may not be for everybody. So we'll talk to you about it and see if you're not going to travel that much, but I would think after watching this presentation, people are going to want to get out there and, and city hop around our, our great, uh, our great States. Right. And, and lastly, I'm going to throw a little plug just in case you guys want to hear some great music. As you mm, know, please. I produce music. I produce records. If you want to go to bentriverrecords.com, Sign up for my emails. You'll know whatever I'm doing and what's going on and so on and so forth. You're more than welcome to do so. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for that final plug, too, because that's that's a really important piece, too, of kind of what what lights you up. So any uh, anything else you want to pop out for us before we figure out? I, more, think, I, I uh, think I've really covered most of it. <laughs> Yeah, Mara says, I'll never forget Joe inviting me to Diana's performance at a private party in Denver last year. It was my first in the U.S., and I love the people and the atmosphere. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Somebody else says, uh, Joe was actually recruited uh, straight to expert and mentor level. <laughs> That's so, 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 so true. Any other parting, uh, parting words for us, hon? You got anything else, Joe? Any other parting words? Uh, for us? I, I think I'm pretty well there. I'll let you. Yeah, new to this group, but uh, I can confirm everything about Hyatt. Fantastic program. I've been a lifetime globalist. I'm not sure who this is uh, for several years, as well as a lifetime uh, titanium elite with Marriott. And they don't compare. Hyatt blows everyone else away. Agree? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. All right. I'm waiting for Brooke to give us the uh, the final number on the comments before I give the random number generator. Brandon says, you're chock full of knowledge. And uh, <laughs> someone else says, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Now I have to put uh, on some music and go eat. I know I need to do uh, the same thing as well. Thanks for that pro tip about Mission Ballroom. I actually did not know. Uh, about that at all. Well, so, yeah, hit me up. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll yeah, let's all just go sure. in the uh, yeah. Italian place too. <laughs> so um, let me see uh, if I can go find out the number of comments here. It's hard for me to tell when I'm on the live stream. One second. Anybody have any ideas? Anybody want to guess how many comments we had today? Let's see. Uh, all right. I'm going to guess. Hold on. Oh, there goes Brooke. 213. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke from above. All right. All right, Joe, give me a uh, drum roll. My favorite. Okay. Music. I ready? can't really do that. I have no rhythm. I just produce records. I don't play on them. <laughs> um. 77. I love that. Here, I'll do it. Right. Commenter number 77. Thank you so much. Bailey, thank you for that too. Uh, that you have won the $100 travel savings card. So Brooke from above will get in touch with you. Y'all, if you are watching, uh, I, I'm going to have to go back and watch this again, Joe. There was so many good things. And it really, um, you really got our curiosity going about getting out there and traveling. So we appreciate you. Yeah, guys, just look um, under every stone, under every corner, go down a street that not not everybody knows about. I mean, obviously, there you you want to go to places that are safe in this world. Um, you can definitely stray onto the wrong street in New Orleans. 
um, or in New York mm-hmm. or in San Francisco or whatever. So, but, but again, I think, I think all of this will basically be available to you. You can watch the presentation again, but yes. check some of these places out. You will, you'll, you'll say, Oh my God, I can't believe that I've been eating at Olive Garden all of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it anymore. All right. Get Thank curious you. y'all and be safe and safe travels. We'll see you next week. Joe, thanks for all the info. Thanks. Okay. Thanks.